wonder whether or not someone will use you as a political chess piece at this point and decide. I mean, I, I believe, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you have overwhelming support of the general public. Most people believe that what you did was was a good thing for America and that you are, in fact, a patriot. I, I, I think the vast majority of people, and the people that I've talked to, I have talked to a few people that disagree with that, they're misinformed. They were misinformed about what you did and what information you leaked or whether or not people's lives were put in danger because of that. And I had to explain the whole chain of events and where the information actually was, how it was leaked and what you had done to protect people. There's, there's a, could you please explain that? Because it wasn't just that the information was dumped. Yeah, so I mean, this is really the subject of our, our, our last conversation. It goes on for three hours, but I wrote a book. Yeah, but I just, just to, yeah, so this will stand yeah, no, alone. I'm, I'm, yeah, just, I'll, I'll go through it. So uh, the idea, and this is the subject of my first book, Permanent Record, which was why I came on last year. And actually, uh, just this week, the soft cover came out, so it's more affordable uh, for people who didn't want to get it before. Um, is this story, right? It, it's who I am, where I came from, why I did this, how, and, and what it meant. Uh, I didn't just reveal information. Uh, I gave it to journalists, right? Uh, these journalists were only given um, access to the information on the condition that they would publish no story simply because it was newsworthy or interesting, right? They weren't going to clickbait classified documents. Uh, they would only publish stories if they were willing to make an independent institutional judgment and stand by it that it was in the public interest that this be known, right? And then as an extraordinary measure on top of that, before they publish the story, right? And this is not me publishing things, putting them out on the internet or blog or something, which I could have done, would have been very easy. Uh, it's not me telling them what to write or not to write. They're uh, doing this, the Guardian, the Washington Post, you know, Der Spiegel. Um, they are then going to the United States government in advance of publication and giving the government a chance, uh, an adversarial opportunity to argue against publication, to go, you guys don't get it. You know, Snowden's a liar. These documents are false. Or he's not lying. And yes, these are true, but these programs are effective. They're saving lives, whatever. And here's what we can show you to convince you, please don't publish this or leave out this detail. And in every case I'm aware of, that process was followed. And that's why now in 2020, remember, we're seven years on from 2013, the government has never shown a single example of any harm that has come as a result of the publication of these documents back in 2013, the revelation of mass surveillance. And it's that's what I wanted to bring. Yeah, up. and I mean yeah, it's please. it's unscientific, uh, but I've seen polls run on Twitter uh, very recently uh, in the last few weeks when this pardon question came out, uh, where 90 percent, like 90 plus percent of people were in favor of a pardon. And that's crazy. Uh, even in 2013, when we were doing well, you know, it was like 60% um, in favor among young people, uh, but it was like 40% for older people. But that's because the government was on TV every Sunday, you know, bringing these uh, CIA suits going, uh, who were there with their very stern faces going, oh, this caused great damage and it cost lives and everything like that. But those arguments stopped being convincing when seven years later, after they told us and the sky is falling, the atmosphere never catches fire, right? The oceans never boil off. We're still alive. Uh, and I, I think people can see through that. And that was, uh, again, this, exactly what you said, people don't know this history, uh, the, that 10% who are against it, and actually a lot of the 90% who are even in favor of it. Um, they don't know the details. It wasn't well covered by the media at the time. It was all about this person said that, that person said that. Is it true? Is it false? You know, it was sort of, uh, they were playing on character. They were trying to make a drama out of it. And that's a big part of why I wrote Permanent Record. Uh, and it's been tremendously gratifying to see people connect to it. And actually this, uh, you know, I mentioned it, uh, we talked on, on Twitter when we were talking about the possibility of having this conversation. And I was like, I looked back at our first conversation we had, and it's had like 16 million views, man. That's for a three-hour conversation. Uh, like set and then probably an equal amount of people just listened to it in audio. Right. And that, that was just for one clip on YouTube. There were smaller clips of like yeah. talking about cell phone surveillance, and that was like another 10 million views. 
77,000 comments. Uh, the book on Amazon has thousands of reviews. Uh, it's got a 4.8 rating, which like by the number of people and how it's rated. That's one of the best autobiographies, according to ordinary people, the audience, in like years. And to see that after these years of attacks, uh, to me, is evidence that despite all these news guys uh, at night going, well, Senator, you know, uh, no one really cares about privacy these days. These kids with their Facebooks and their Instagrams, uh, you know, people